Hello and welcome to Games from Folktales, a podcast that mixes historical research and tabletop role-playing settings. I'm your host, Timothy Ferguson. This is a short audio episode to accompany a longer post on the blog. It gives the statistics for a new, tiny demon called the Gemstone that Betrays. Occasionally, I find an audio source with so much useful material that I can't properly cut it out into plot hooks. Here's a hook that comes from a couple of little fragments from a book called The Curious Law of Precious Stones by George Kuntz. The readers for LibriVox in these sections were Dustin Thomas and Michael Kaczynski. I may revisit this book for further material in future episodes. It seems richly festooned with treasures, viz sources, and material bonuses. It's also the first time, I believe, that I've seen the word wees, or viz, in the wild. It refers to the animal spirit of a diamond as vis adamanticum, in its explanation of how diamonds sexually reproduce. The opinion given in 1609 by Enselimus de Boot, court physician to Rudolf II of Germany, regarding the power inherent in certain precious stones, embodies the ideas on this subject held by many of the enlightened minds of that period. The supernatural and acting cause is God, the good angel and the evil one, the good by the will of God and the evil by his permission. What God can do by himself, he could do also by the means of ministers, good and bad angels, who, by special grace of God and for the preservation of men, are enabled to enter precious stones and to guard men from dangers or procure some special grace for them. However, as we may not affirm anything positive touching the presence of angels in gems, to repose trust in them or to ascribe undue powers to them, is more especially pleasing to the spirit of evil, who transforms himself into an angel of light, steals into the substance of the little gem, and works such wonders by it, that some people do not place their trust in God, but in the gem, and seek to obtain it, what they should ask of God alone. Thus it is perhaps the spirit of evil which exercises its power on us through the turquoise, teaching us, little by little, that safety is not to be sought from God, but from the gem. Here's an obvious plot hook, presented as simple narration. At the trial, in 1232, of Hubert de Burg, chief justiciar, one of the charges brought against him was that he had surreptitiously removed from the English treasury an exceedingly valuable stone, possessing the virtue of rendering the wearer invincible in battle, and had given it to Llewellyn, king of Wales, the enemy of his own sovereign, Henry III of England, 1207-1272. This must have taken place about 1228, when Henry was engaged in war with the Welsh. And if you go to the blog that accompanies the podcast, there are statistics for a spirit of deceit based on a gemstone. 